Halstead Telephone Company and r and Broadcasting Incorporated is proud to present to you this broadcast on yourliveevent.com. Hello, welcome in to the Your Live Event Robotics Show. I am your host, Mac Robinson, keeping you up to date on all things robotics, whether it be talking about the game as well as talking to mentors, coaches, uh, players, volunteers, uh, going to be talking with all of them here throughout the year, throughout the season, and of course, keeping you up to date on all things robotics. Of course, we are powered by Enbridge and got a great show lined up for you guys. Going to be talking with Warrior Robotics as well as Red River Rage Robotics uh, a little bit later on in the show. But we're going to start things off by passing it over to Jack. Jack had a chance to sit down with Rory Held, a volunteer with uh, the Northern Robotic. The Northern Minnesota Robotics Conference, excuse me, as well as first at being Rory Held. So, Jack, take it away. Welcome back to the Your Live Event uh, Robotics Show. I'm Jack. I am here with uh, Rory. Um, he is the head coach uh, or mentor. And I, I always screw up the the head, or I don't screw it up because I've been told head coach and mentor are kind of interchangeable. Uh, but he is the head coach, the mentor for the Red River uh, Rage Robotics uh, Team 7048. Uh, <clears throat> now, I'm pretty excited here because I, I always love uh, talking uh, robotics with folks. I've learned so much uh, <clears throat> throughout the entire time, but this one's a little bit different. We get to kind of get into... Uh, volunteer work and things of that nature but i do kind of want to put put that aside for two seconds and kind of talk um <clears throat> robotics really quick with you eh? because i always love uh starting off with how did you get involved with um robotics when was the first time you heard about it so robotics is actually a very close family ties to me um I was going to school at the University of Minnesota and at the Crookston campus. And uh, through a group of friends, I had uh, met a girl and we were dating at the time. So the first time um, really met her family or did anything was uh, hopping in a car, driving four and a half hours down to the Twin Cities for a first robotics event back in 2009, believe it or not. <laughs> Um, and from then on, I was hooked. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Why didn't I get this opportunity in high school? I, so um, I started mentoring the next year um, with 876 Hatton Northwood, and I've just kept doing it since then. Um, I have changed teams now. I help with the Fargo team um, and Moorhead as well. But uh, robotics is very has very close family ties to me because uh, – I started mentoring a team. Um, my father-in-law still mentors 876. Um, my wife and her brother were on the team when they were back in high school. So it, it's just, it's become very personal. So when we go to events or anything like that, the Fargo and Hatton Northwood being so close together, generally we're going to the same events. So it turns from robotics with all the kids and everything like that. And it's also a family event then because my in-laws are there, My um, you know, friends and family, uh, um, you know, uncles and grandparents on my wife's side are all coming to the event. So it's robotics. It's a ton of fun, but it's also very a uh, huge family event too. That's awesome. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. The instant you were saying like how deep it is rooted in like your family and everything else, like thing that was going through my mind was it, it almost sounds like a, a giant. Uh, like almost Thanksgiving gathering every single yeah. time you go out and <laughs> do an event. That's so cool. Yeah. It's one of those things too, where as we're going to different events or twin cities, my family has started coming as well. So you could uh, kind of turning into big family gatherings wherever we go for events. So it's a, it's a ton of fun and it makes it that much more fun knowing that, you know, your my in-laws and family members are, in the stands cheering for the robotics teams that we've mentored and the kids that we've helped. And, you know, it's so much fun to see the kids going, who's that group cheering? Oh, that's my wife, her mom, 
her dad, you know, brother-in-law, friends from college, friends from um, back in high school. So it's, it's a ton of fun. I, I really uh, was very fortunate to get adopted into this world and um, have not left it. So it's, it's a ton of fun. Um, and that is, that is another thing I've, I've noticed a lot with uh, talking with other mentors and head coaches where they're saying like, Hey, once you drink the Kool-Aid, you're, like, you're oh, in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I was told, Hey, do you want to come down to the twin cities and go to a robotics event? I'm thinking, okay, battle bots, this is going to be fun. I get there and it's these robots doing this game and it's a rock concert for nerds. And I'm like, this is so cool. And to see the ideas that the kids are coming up with and how they think and design and do things and the progression from when they're a freshman on the team to when they're a senior and all of those developments are so cool to see. Absolutely. Now, uh, with that being said, um, what does mentoring mean to you? It's robotics is so ingrained into your family. So, yeah, what does what does mentoring, head coaching, mean for you? It it means a lot. It's a ton of fun to work with the kids every day, um, or when we're building and meeting. Um, it's really fun to see their eyes open up and realize, hey, there are other opportunities out there you know, in the STEM fields and the other fields as well that tie into STEM. Um, it's something that I never really had an opportunity to participate on in on a robotics team and being able to help mentor kids and, hey, you know what, we're going to build this robot in six weeks. We're going to go to competition and they're, we're going to do what? And then you get to the competition. It's a ton of fun. And yeah, it is a lot of work and I spend a lot of time doing it and I'm very fortunate to have family around me that support me through it. Um, but it is um, as much fun for us at mentors and adults working the events, helping teams, building on the weekends to see, you know, take this idea and turn it into a robot and then go play events on the field and have a ton of fun and then really get to share those stories and talk with kids and get kids interested in fields that they never thought that they would have an interest in. Um, be it from your basic fields where you got to go to a college or even like the trade schools, you know, electrical, um, carpentry, welding, all of those are things that we teach, including some woodworking when we are prototyping. So it runs a gambit of skills and there are people that go, Hey, I want to go do this or that. And there are the options that are for them. Uh, and that, just like you were saying, like that, the game, everything is so cool and talking with, but like just knowing like, hey, these, the, the students, the kids that are participating, like, they, just like you were saying, the gambit of stuff that this really does touch is something really special where I'm looking at it. I'm going like, oh, little Tammy or Susie over there is going to mm -hmm. design a future part that is going to be so revolutionary it's so cool to think about now, yeah it's it's really turned from uh you know, what can you do now to what they can do and it's uh to see the evolution and growth and just make them realize hey you know what uh, you can do anything you want and it's fun and you know it's it's cool to be a nerd <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely say that I, that is 100 percent true 100 percent true and I'm always, when we're recruiting, I'm always saying it's more than robots. Yeah, we're trying to build a robot, but we, you know, media and, you know, outreach and, you know, re, you know, giving back. There's so many different things to it, too. And, you know, when someone says, well, hey, I have no interest in building a robot, but I like to do this. I go, perfect. We got that. You want to go to do public speaking? We have that. You want to be business? We have that. So, Anything you're interested in, we can tie it back to robotics. And with that being said, we're, you know, so much more than just robots. I mean, you are so much more than just a um, mentor and coach. You wear a lot of different hats, especially when it comes to the volunteer side, uh, to a point where before we started recording, I started trying to write down all the different titles you had and you got to the third one and I was like, okay, I quit. I'm just going to let him kind of explain <laughs> everything that he does. So 
let's get into a little bit with the volunteering. What what is what does volunteering look like, or what what is that for robotics? So the events cannot be ran without the volunteers. Um, all of the people at these events, all the adults running the fields, helping kids, getting you know troubleshooting issues, resetting the field. It's all volunteers. No one is paid. So we're taking time out to come to these events that are a ton of fun. Um, you know, I, I don't want, it is an important thing that we do to volunteer, but at the same time, it's a volunteer thing that you have so much fun doing. Um, and we're laughing the whole time. And so I got into volunteering about six years ago. Up until that point, I was just mentoring, helping build, um, was drive coach. And uh, I, I really... What made me want to start volunteering is a particular role, becoming an FTA someday. And there is a process to get there that I'm working through. But some of the, one of the big things the FTA does is, is responsible for the field and making sure things are running, running on time, your robots connecting, troubleshooting issues. And I think back to there was a year when we were competing in Duluth. And we had a match where it was a horrible time. The robot wasn't responding. Um, the controls were jerky. We were losing connection. And we were having issues. And at the end of the match, we were like, help. You know, what can we do? And the FTA said, hey, go over there. I got to get a match started. As soon as that match started, he came over and said, you know, went with his knowledge and his role, basically said, hey, let's take a look at this. Let's figure out what's going on. He gave us some recommendations to correct the issue so that we could keep playing. And that's really, at that point, I'm like, okay, that is a cool role and a cool volunteer position that I want to pursue because you can take a team that is trying to get on the field, trying to compete, um, and their robot's not connecting or they're having this issue, and being able to sit down with them and say, hey, you know what? Yeah, we're going to get this connected. We're going to get all six robots connected. We're going to keep the match on time. And more importantly, you put on a good show too. Because as important of the event is for the students and the mentors and the people there, it's also a live event that we're putting on a huge show for people in the arena and watching remote on a stream. So it's it's a role that I really respect and the people that are in it currently, I have so much respect for and I've learned a ton from. Um, and someday I'll get the nod for becoming a official FTA for first. I already am the FTA for the NMRC. So the off season events, the championship event back in October, um, I was the guy on the field there. And um, we're very fortunate with NMRC to have a great bunch of volunteers that work NMRC and the official first events as well. Okay. Now, uh, at FARC, what what is that? NMRC. Oh, oh uh, <laughs> sorry. That uh, what what is that? So the Northern Minnesota Robotics Conference is the group of teams up in Northern Minnesota that came together and said, "Hey, you know what? We've got something really cool going on, and wanted to do more." So they formed a nonprofit. And, uh, you know, now we have uh, the NMRC, I believe, has over 30 teams in it now um, holding championship events in October, holding a week zero event for everyone to try out their robots two weeks before the competition. Um, it's just a fun group of teams that came together and said, hey, you know what, we want to give uh, the students an opportunity to do more and that's what they've done. And, you know, it's fun to be part of them. And um, fortunately with it being Northern Minnesota, um, they have graciously welcomed a few North Dakota teams in there like Fargo mm -hmm. and Grand Forks and Hatton Northwood um, to be part of it. So it's a, it's a ton of fun. Um, one of these years, we're going to do a border match and do three North Dakota teams and three Minnesota teams and see how that turns out. Oh, that'd be a lot of fun. That'd be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Now, uh, you did mention uh, you did mention the um, volunteer work at the events and everything else. And yes, I, my first exposure was last year uh, at Alexandria, and mm -hmm. like uh, like you said, it, it is a rock concert. I was sitting there going, "Like, man, this looks like a 
old school WWE, WWF event. Like, this is, this is the coolest thing ever. Um, now, is there more opportunities for volunteer outside or not during the um Absolutely. Events? Can you go into so, that? Yeah. So, you know, certainly at the events, the uh, Grand Forks takes roughly 100 to 150 volunteers to put on that event. Um, and those volunteers range from field work, you know, getting the robots going, resetting the field, to more of the behind the scenes things such as queuing, getting everyone in line and making sure the teams are there, inspection, um, troubleshooting issues, um, judging awards. There's a group of judges that do a fantastic job and have some very tough decisions to make. Um, outside of that, there are many other volunteer events um, that people were always looking for. Um, one of them is the kickoff events that happen in January. Um, those events are um, where teams come together and watch the game, the reveal, figure out what, what we're going to do and receive their kit of parts. And those events are um, happen all at the same time across the world. So we all know what the game is at the same time. Um, we host our kickoff for North Dakota or whatever teams were, would like to come at the Fargo Air Museum. That's an event I worked with DigiKey to uh, start and continue to run that every year so that um, we can come together as a group, figure out what we're doing. But those events require volunteers, you know, such as kit apart, handout, greeters. Um, so there's one, another good opportunity for volunteering if you just want to try it out is um, kickoff events or the actual FRC events. There are off-season events. Um, certainly NMRC holds their championship event in the fall. Um, the other organization on the part of STEM Alliance, we hold our off-season event in August, um, started that event. Um, we call it the STEM Expo. The STEM Expo actually started two years ago at the Fargo Air Show, where we brought in a few teams, um, had a few colleges came in and just kind of showed off some things in STEM during the Fargo Air Show. So we're driving robots and the Blue Angels are flying over. Uh, and it was just a fun thing. And we knew we had something very special started. So we wanted to continue that. But with the Fargo Air Show happening every two to three years, we decided we want to do an off-season event. So last year we hosted our first off-season event as well. So now teams in the area have the opportunity to do off-season events in Fargo and wherever NMRC hosts host the off-season event for them, um, which is a great opportunity. Um, 14 years ago when I started, if you wanted to do an off-season event, you were going down to the Twin Cities area, and which is fun and great, but at times it can become difficult for teams and cost prohibitive and travel and calls versus teams up here. You know, generally people are running to Fargo or Bemidji or Alexandria where we've had them before and um, makes it very convenient and more accessible to everyone. Now, to volunteer, do you have to, can somebody go in without any knowledge of robotics, anything like that? And, and what what's the stuff that that type of volunteer is going to do? So if you have no experience and you want to come volunteer at an event um, to sign up, you go to firstinspires.org for an official event. And there is a ways to help. And there is a volunteer section in there where you can go sign up and see all the different events across um, first Lego league, FTC robotics. There's different things at all levels um, from elementary school to high school. And um, it really gets you in there. Um, to start out, if you have no knowledge, but you think this is really cool and you want to come help, um, for first official first events, there's that web page and you can do things like field reset, get to be on the game field. And as the students are taking their robots off, you get to go back on the field and you know make sure to pick up the game pieces, get them back where they need to go, fix the field if there's any damage. Um, there are things like queuing where if your organization where it's like, okay, hey, I need these six teams to be in these six spots, and we need that kind of organization. 
um, registration, um, you know, helping direct people in and out. So if you have no experience, that is great. And the best thing is when you volunteer with no experience, you get to work with this team of people that have been volunteering for years um, and have this great, ex have all this experience and they'll, you know, help you, teach you and really say, Hey, you know what, you started out as a referee or you started out as a field reset person. Where do you want to go? Um, it, it's very, very, very cool how there are progression paths and say, Hey, you want to be a, um, robot inspector or a C or a control system advisor or a FTA, well, hey, here are the steps to do it. Um, there are some requirements. There's trainings that they at first will provide as well. So if you have experience, great. If you have no experience, even better. Um, and if you don't think you have a skill that fits into robotics, I bet you you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You don't need to know how to weld or do electrical, but if you like to have fun and watch robots, there's always a spot. Oh, and, and certainly with NMRC too, um, NMRC and teams in probably a lot of people's local homes are looking for volunteers as well to help coach and mentor and um, or to bring food one night or, you know, any kind of skill set teams are always looking for for volunteering. So well, when you say volunteering, it's volunteering for team mentoring events, anything and everything. Wow. Now. I'm going to switch gears a little bit back to um, uh, team and everything else, and then we'll switch back. But um, before before I, I let, let you go and everything else, I do want to, I always like asking this kind of as one of the last questions, which would be for, do you have a goal for your team or even if it's a personal goal for you during this season? My biggest goal is that uh, the kids are having fun and that we they learn something. Um, it may be a hard skill building a robot. It might be a soft skill working together as a team, working with people you don't necessarily agree with. Um, so for my team, it's every year, it's the same goal. Yes. We want to get the robot out the door, but at the same time, we want to do it in a way where the kids had fun doing it. Um, they're proud of what they built and they can say at the end of the competition that, Hey, we built this robot. We're proud of it. We had a ton of fun and we can't wait to do it next year. Absolutely. Now, real quick again, before we, we go, how can you said the website before, but one more time, uh, how does somebody sign up to become a volunteer? To become a volunteer at official first event, it is firstinspires.org. That is the main landing page for first in general. There are volunteer opportunities from teams to events. That is another great opportunity to start volunteering at off season events. It would be um, the NMRC website or the STEM Alliance website. Um, there are contact us on both of those. And uh, between NMRC or the STEM Alliance, we would be able to uh, get you in contact with the right people or get you signed up for the events or, you know, help you find what you'd like to do. Perfect, perfect. Now, uh, Roy, seriously, thanks for Thanks for talking with me. Uh, thanks for bringing me down in a completely uh, different path than I've you know, been able to talk about with the volunteering. Um, <clears throat> again, please make sure you are visiting those websites if you are interested in volunteering. Uh, I promise you, it is so cool the instant you get there, not just like watching it is one thing, but being able to be a part of it as well is so cool and knowing that, hey, you are helping out you know, kids and this next generation and everything else, please go, go volunteer. But with that being said, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will see you next time.
the PRB Boosters are happy to sponsor coverage of the Tigers. Like them on Facebook for events and fundraisers. The PRB Boosters could use your help. Be part of great events and fundraisers, all built to give back and present more opportunities for the students of Pine River Bacchus Schools. For information or to get started, email prbboosterclub1.com. Meetings are the first Monday of every month at 6 p.m. at the school. Good luck, Tigers, from the PRB Boosters. Restock on food, fuel, and baits at locally owned Station 371 on Highway 371 in Pine River. Station 371 has bait and tackle, quality Senex gasoline, off-road diesel, and is the only stop with number one diesel. Make sure to stop by to wash off the sand and salt with their indoor car wash. Open when the temp is at least 26 degrees. They'll hook you up with your fishing and hunting licenses too. Station 371 on Highway 371 in Pine River. Thank you for supporting local business. Special thanks over to Jack for that interview with Rory Held. Now let's go ahead and throw it over where I got a chance to speak with Warrior Robotics, starting off with the mentor, Brian Boardwell. Uh, got a chance to speak with him a little bit earlier. All right, and now joining me here on the YourLiveEvent.com Robotic Show, Brian Boardwell, the coach and mentor of the Warrior Robotics 2503. Brian, thank you for joining me. And you know, when it comes to, you know, your group of kids so far, you know, obviously we're, we're still kind of getting, uh, getting their, their footing when it comes to building the robots up and everything, you know, what was the initial reaction like when you guys saw the game and, you know, the immediate, you know, strategy, <laughs> strategic measures, uh, you know, taken by some of the kids and, and you guys. Yeah. Well, uh, um, I don't know. It was kind of, I guess it mixed it. Uh, some of them felt like, Hey, this is like an easy game. We don't have to climb this year. <laughs> and, uh, you know, to have to maneuver a cone and a little plastic little cube. Um, when we, uh, saw the game, we were, uh, we actually host uh, a kickoff event with, C with central lakes college. So our kids, uh, kind of prepare some things for other teams that are there. And, and, uh, I think they had a lot of excitement. Uh, you know, they're, uh, I remember listening to, uh, to, uh, uh, the guy from Nevis. So uh, <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> um, uh, anyways, I'll remember his name. I went to Olaf, uh, yes, yes, you know, Olaf. you're trying to, you're trying to slow everybody down. And, uh, they were all excited about going back to our, uh, and starting, they wanted to stay for the way late in the afternoon and, and kept, kept uh, brainstorming. So, and uh, now we're, uh, you know, into our fourth week of the build season, and uh, they're realizing that this one is a challenge. There's no question about it. And uh, so we actually had earlier this week, we were kind of contemplating different kind of designs, even still with our intake, which is making me really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they got things ironed out and, and we're moving in a good direction, so. Well, Brian, the other the other side of it, too, is that, you know, when it comes to robotics, you know, in, in some sports, you have, you know, some kids that are that, you know, play well and you have different, you know, physical attributes that, you know, different kids are able to utilize. But robotics, basically anybody can come in. And so at that point, how do you as a mentor try to balance, you know, the personalities that get mixed in? And on top of it, how do you help them kind of find their strengths? Because a lot of times it's, you know, not just the robot that you're testing with, but it's also testing with what areas they want to, they want to mess with. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we start in, uh, usually we start late September, early October, and we have, you know, rookies that come in and we have our veterans kind of lead them in, but uh, we actually build a robot in the preseason, uh, just put a base together and do some things like that. And then we tell them, they said, you got to explore everything. You don't really kind of know until you, until you experience it. So we had our rookies, we had seven rookies this year. Uh, they put together just a base that we had from over the years and uh, programmed it and got it to move. Um, of course, they had help from our, our, our uh, lead folks, our, our, our veteran kids. So I think that's a big way that we introduce them into what we're doing and allow them the freedom to you know, move around. Uh, if, if this is an area that you don't think like electronics or programming or pneumatics or mechanical, you know, try them all. And, uh, you know, they'll just kind of gravitate. Uh, usually the rookies kind of hang together. Uh, and throughout this process, it, as freshmen, it, it's a learning year for them. And uh, uh, some of them really take off. And we have had uh, uh, some really good freshmen this year that have taken off and 
And uh, I think that uh, getting together earlier, early before the season even starts is a pretty integral part to what we do uh, w with our team. And then, you know, the other aspect of it too, you know, you mentioned it where, you know, it might be a little bit easier, you know, without having the climbing aspect of it, but, you know, what do you think are some of the challenges that you see from the, from the game this year that, you know, could present themselves and maybe some of the easier side of things, you know, maybe some of the easier ways that this game is compared to last year. Well, I think uh, actual huge challenges, you know, take getting that cone indexed in your robot and trying to get it positioned so that you can grab it and then elevate it up to the next level, up to the different uh, areas. That's been a challenge for our kids, uh, figuring that out, that indexing part. You know, we're kind of doing over the bumper indexing. We're trying to bring in this, this cone and we've got different scenarios for that. So that's been a pretty good challenge. Uh, I don't know if there's anything easy. <laughs> that, uh, maybe with uh, we, we've incorporated a swerve drive on our base, um, maybe getting onto that platform, but that's going to rep, you know, represent some different challenges in and of itself as well. And I think driving up on there might be for, for our, for our team might be an easier portion of it, but you got to get three other robots up there, or at least another one anyways, and then get it to balance. So there's always little things that, uh, that, you know, that, um, force your team to kind of think out of the box. And I think that's a wonderful thing about the program. And, you know, one thing that I noticed when, when I was watching it, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, you tell me, but, you know, when I was watching the, the initial video, you know, last year's, in last year's game, there was obviously a, an easy path for defense. And, and, you know, if you weren't able to get the ball in the basket, you were able to play defense quite a bit, uh, you know, throughout the game as well. But this year, because of the fact that it's very much puzzle solving and trying to see if you can, you know, put the cue ball, put the cone up, do you think that there's less defense involved or less of a focus on defense when it comes to this year? I would, that's probably pretty accurate, I guess, you know, I mean, you're going to be focusing on a, trying to get your, your, you know, those, how, whatever, whatever they called to get their three, you know, get your two row, two cones in a ball or a box or whatever. Uh, um, so I, uh, yeah, maybe a little less on defense um, this year compared to last. Uh, maybe you, you could ask some of the other kids that, that are, are part of that. So. And then uh, Brian, the other aspect as well, because I, I say it every week and I feel like a broken record, but you know, I, I didn't know where, I didn't know about robotics when I was a kid and I, and I wish somebody would have told me because I would have absolutely loved this. Um, yeah. But you know, I'm always interested too how the mentors get involved. And so for you, how did you get involved in, in robotics as a whole? And, you know, how, how have you liked the, the challenges from, from year to year? Well, a guy by the name of Ken Rosen, you might have heard that name. Uh, oh, he's this outreach guy. He said, Brian, you got to teach in engineering at the high school. Before, before I, I got into that, I was doing some graphic arts. I do a whole bunch of different things. But, but anyways, he said, I, I started teaching uh, uh, Project Lead the Way, and I'm a master teacher for principles of engineering. And it really fit well with... Um, problem solving and doing that whole, you know, giving them a problem and then have them, having them go. And uh, so once I got kind of into there, I was kind of in a transition. I coached basketball for quite a few years and I went and got, went to school, got my master's and then I had quit basketball for a while. And then I thought, okay, well, and at that time, for some reason, Ken Rosen stepped in and he said, you guys have to do this program. So that was 16 years ago uh, already. <laughs> and uh, talking about mentors, um, We've had tremendous mentor support over the years. And the wonderful thing about it is these are kids that I've had in my program over the years and they come back. Um, right now I've got, you know, four kids that, that were on my team in past years, uh, mechanical engineers, robotics technicians, they're coming back. Um, I talked to last year, it was kind of the first year after the COVID debacle. Um, and we had a, basically, I think everybody had rookie teams. And uh, I had 17 kids come back last year to help our kids kind of get building. And we, we finished very high in our regional last year and, and uh, I attributed to that. So it's, they give it back and, and I've had, uh, I just wonderful support from those guys. So I haven't really had to do much. They just start asking me, hey, when are we gonna start robotics? And uh, so that's been really a kind of a shining star i think in our program these kids are coming back and and giving back and i think that's a wonderful thing so um 
yeah, we've had wonderful mentor support. So, and, and as far as mine, you know, I just thought, okay, this is, I'm, I'm going in that engineering realm and, and what a great opportunity for us to have a club after school to strengthen that aspect of, of uh, my curriculum in high school. And uh, so it's been, it's been wonderful. So. Now, Brian, I got to ask you, you've been at this for 16 years. I asked this to Mike Vogelweed at <laughs> Thunder Robotics uh, last week as well. But yeah. I want to ask you, in the 16 years that you've been, you've been mentoring, what's been the most out-of-the-box thought that you've gotten from a student that's actually made it into the design? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, ah, we had some pretty cool uh, uh, an intake when we did this cube. There was like a milk crate. Mm -hmm. And these kids completely manufactured the arm and they 3D printed uh, parts to go into this arm. And uh, he's actually a mentor now for us this year. And I thought that out of the box, I'm like, there is no way that thing is going to work. And all right, it didn't work that great, but it still worked. And we, we competed <laughs> and the kids had a lot of fun with that one. And I was, I thought that one was, that was pretty outside the box. Um, I thought when we start, we, when we, uh, uh, shot frisbees uh, a few years ago, uh, or we had a pretty cool design. Uh, really called it Rexy. <laughs> I don't know why they came up with Rexy. They come up with different names for our robots every year, but I thought that was a pretty cool uh, design as well. We should we were able to shoot frisbees like crazy. <laughs> so uh, you know, thinking like, how on earth would we ever do that? And then all of a sudden, boom! Six weeks later. You have it. It's it's amazing. You know, they just get after it. So and it's always about this time where we're talking. This is Wednesday of the yeah, Wednesday of week four. And I'm like, holy man, we we, we got to get to week zero and and uh, we got to get a working robot. I, it'll come together, but it always is a little stressful. All right. Well, Brian Boardwell of Warrior Robotics mentor for team at 2503. Brian, thank you so much for joining me. Appreciate the time. Absolutely. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. My name is Jared, born and raised in Minnesota, and I'm a project director at Enbridge. Enbridge is more than a pipeline company. It's a company participating in renewable energy projects in Minnesota and abroad, and I'm really proud to be working here. We believe a cleaner energy future is achievable. For over 20 years, we've been early adopters of renewable energy and we're proudly committed to net zero emissions by 2050. To hear more from Jared, visit Enbridge.com slash Jared. That's J-E-R-R-I-D. And welcome back to the YourLiveEvent.com robotic show. Joining me now uh, are the Warrior Robotics uh, players as we have uh, Ewan, Zane, and Thora all joining me. And uh, guys, thank you all for joining me. And I, I want to start with with all with a question for all three of you. And I guess you and I'll start with you on the left here. Um, you know, for you, what made you get into robotics? Because, you know, for me, I, I, I feel like a broken record. I say it here every week, but, you know, nobody told me about robotics. And I, I'm really upset that nobody back in my high school had ever told me about this. So, you know, how did you get into robotics? And, and what, what area do you really... Um, did you really get, did you, did you really find the most interest in, especially when you got into it? I love to create things, and that's probably the major reason why. Uh, my friend was in robotics uh, in middle school, um, and the part that I find interesting, I like to program, but Zane is the lead programmer. <laughs> so I did some design work last year and especially this year. Okay. And Zane, what about you? I take it, uh, I take it you like the programming side then if you're, if you're leading it. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, so I'm the lead programmer and also currently the only programmer because last year I took it upon myself to program our swerve drive sub or serve drive base, which took up a lot of my time um, and was complicated enough that people couldn't really keep up. Uh, so anyway, the reason that actually answering your question, uh, I joined because I was interested in programming and, uh, thought it would be an interesting opportunity. And then Thora, what about you? I know you're, you're a rookie this year. It's your first year into it. What brought you into robotics? 
Um, the main thing that brought me in, I guess, was one of my friends was really interested in it. So I kind of just went with her to the first meeting and then I really liked it. It's really interesting and fun. And I'm learning a lot of new stuff. So. And then I, I guess for all three of you, you know, when it came to this year's game, it's been different from the last couple of years uh, where a lot of it was, you know, putting the ball in the basket, similar, um, similar games over the last few years. But, you know, for you guys, what was the difference, I guess, in adjusting to more of a puzzle solving type of game this year? The time is pretty different from the ball. So <laughs> it makes it pretty difficult to pick up and move that around. We, we kind of initially thought that this game would be really easy coming off of last year where we had to lift up our robot into the air. And it was, that was such a, last year was just challenging like just the game itself was challenging. You had to shoot, if you wanted to, to do the best, you had to shoot into the high goal. But um, this year it's more so, like you said, a puzzle solving game where you have to try and pick up two very oddly shaped objects. The cube is similar to a ball because it kind of bulges at the sides, but um, the cone is very different. So trying to create some system to pick up those objects consistently is, a challenge and it's not something we accept expected to run into when we and first then, yeah. and then uh the other aspect as well that i'm always interested in especially you know i i had my i went to my first event back in october and i love to see the dynamic you know as you guys are are, are out there uh you know using the robot everything like that but especially i, I got even more interested in the pit and you know, you guys have so many different personalities that you guys have going on in the pit, whether it be between the veterans and the rookies as well. What's it been like, you know, especially working with different with different kids and being able to, you know, balance out, hey, I'm stronger in this area, but at the same time, we need some help over here. And so trying to figure out what role is best fit the team and yourselves. Um, well, I guess the thing to understand there is that we have a 10 by 10 space for the pit and we have toolboxes all around and the robot in the middle. So there's real, there's really like a foot of a foot and a half of space on either side of the robot. You have five kids in the pits at all times, like at most. So it's really not so much like you get the kids down there who have the most experience in each area already. And then they just do that. And then if they need help, somebody will help them, but it's, it's less of trying to coordinate the whole team and just the five people best at their tasks. And then when it comes to balancing personalities too, and just being able to work together as a whole, you know, what's it like getting a chance to, you know, welcome in, uh, you know, new, new players like Thora getting a chance to, to come in and uh, you know, Thora, I guess for you, what's it also like coming in as one of the rookies this year? and uh, being able to not only learn, but also try to contribute as best as you can. Um, coming in as a rookie, I guess it's kind of nerve wracking because like they're already a team. So like, you don't want to like force your way into the team, but like you want to be part of the team eventually. So like, you kind of just have to like, find a way to like, contribute to the team. The thing that was good though was, so we decided we were going to make prototypes of the arm to get the cone onto the pole. And I invited Thora and several freshmen to come to my team and help me design and build this. And we went with like their design and stuff like that. So incorporating like the rookies as a veteran is good. Yeah, and I kind of have to incorporate the rookies this year. Um, I'm a senior. So being the only one that knows how to program the robot is not a great thing when you're this, when you're a senior. So I have to try to incorporate them into what I'm doing, except the difficulty for me at least is that I'm doing so much that I'm learning as I do it, that it's hard to keep them up, up to, um, keep them into the loop of what's going on, especially when I spend two open hours on coding the robot. There's just not enough time for them to pay, pay attention to it. And then, you know, what's it also like too, because when it comes to the mentors, because for me, that was one of the big things that really stood out to me was the fact that, you know, you have this, this mentorship where, you know, you have players that 
loved robotics and are willing to come back and volunteer their time to help you guys out as well. You know, what's it like having those mentors that, you know, are just volunteering their time and helping out as best as they possibly can to help you guys get put out the best robot that you guys possibly can? We have like two or three mentors who come basically every day. And so they're nice to bounce ideas off of and they give suggestions. Yeah, they have, they have more experience than we do in first products because they, most of us are, have only been here for two years and some of them have been, or have had been on the team for four and then more of them have come back after that. So they end up with more experience than we have. And it's nice to be able to throw out ideas and then they can go, oh, that's a good idea, but uh, here's what I would do or, that won't work because of, the, or did you think of this? Or that won't work because of this. Um, they're, they're really good at discerning what's possible and what's not and what will and won't work. And then, you know, for all three of you, now I know Thor, you don't have as much, this is your first year, so you don't have as much experience with it, but take me through your favorite experience in, in robotics so far. And uh, Ewan, I'll, uh, I'll start with you. Just coming up with a plan as a team and then like designing it, catting it, and then you go and you make it and then you put it together and it works somewhat and then you keep improving it and then it works even better. And just from just like an idea to a thing and that's really cool. I think the best experience for me personally is um, we have this thing called week zero so we go to a practice competition and it allows us to test out a robot on an actual full field in mock in actual competition, but it's not ranked or anything because it's, yeah. Um, but it's, it's really nice to, when you finally worked out all the kinks in your robot, you get that one really good round and it's the first really good round where everything goes right. And afterward, you just feel really good about what you've accomplished. I think that's probably my favorite experience from robotics. Um, my favorite experience, I guess, so far is we went to a conference tournament and it was really nice to just kind of see how a competition like works and stuff before we go to week zero because I'd never really been to a robotics competition before. So, yeah. All right. Well, Ewan, Zane, Thora, all members of Warrior Robotics 2503. Thank you all for joining me. Appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Yeah. This year, Shrupp Excavating is celebrating 40 years of digging it right. With this milestone year, Shrupp Excavating wants to thank all of their past, current, and future employees and customers. They appreciate all you've done to help Shrupp Excavating become one of the most trusted companies in the Lakes area. For any excavation project, Shrupp Excavating will have your project done right and on time serving Pine River, Bacchus, Pequot Lakes, and all the surrounding communities. Shrupp Excavating, LLC. Online at shrupexcavating.com. I'm dreaming of a world where thinkers and doers collide. Where technology creates pathways for new opportunities and ideas. I want to ask questions and shape the answers that lead to real and meaningful advancements in this digital era. I'm going to innovate the world someday. Welcome back to your live event.com robotic show powered by Enbridge. I'm Mac Robinson and going to pass things off over to Jack where he got a chance to sit down with Red River Rage Robotics over in Fargo, team number 7048. So Jack, take it away. Welcome back to the Your Live Event Robotics Show. I'm Jack. I'm here with Finn and Juliet of uh, the Red River Rage Robotics uh, 7048. Uh, that time, I think I hit it out of the park. <laughs> but uh, real quick, uh, before we get into the nuts and bolts of everything that you guys are doing for this year and all that fun stuff, I always like asking, uh, how did you guys you know, get started with robotics? Um, and either one of you can answer first. Me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got started with robotics 
a year ago. This is my second season, and I learned about it at an air show, actually. And my dad is friends with the mentor. They were doing, like, an expo, and I learned about it, and I thought it was just the coolest thing, the coolest activity I could have done, so I knew I had to do it. Uh, so I just signed up and started through school. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Julia? Um, my older brother, Steven, was in robotics when they went to Worlds. So I saw firsthand how cool the program was before COVID. So I already knew going into high school that I wanted to join the program. Okay. No, perfect, perfect. <laughs> now, <clears throat> and that's, uh, Juliet, with, you know, family doing it, that, that's kind of been a, a very normal, like, um, <clears throat> kind of thing that I've been noticing. A lot of people are like, yeah, no, brother, sister, like, friend did it, dragged me in, everything else. Um, <clears throat> now, you said your uh, before COVID, the team went to Worlds. That's where you were, you know, kind of uh, introduced to it. What mm -hmm. has there been a real big difference between uh, before COVID and now? Before COVID, I feel like a lot of teams were a lot stronger just with numbers and in general. Two years of not having a competition to show what we do because people hear robotics and they think that sounds really difficult and one really, I don't want to use really nerdy. <laughs> and, but when you can show like, Hey, we build these awesome machines and we go and we compete and we dominate people want to join. But when we don't get to do that numbers diminish like this year, I think this is the most we've had since 2018 deep space. So. Mm. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Now, um, <clears throat> so wait, again, just kind of like learning everything, kind of going through this. What what do you guys do? Are you guys more uh, controlling? Are you manufacturing? Are you building, coding? What's what is your? Or are you a little bit of everything? You want to start? Uh, me personally, on the team, I like to do all the hands on work. I don't really understand the coding too much, but I love just putting things together, like taking things apart and fiddling with them and like assembling pieces of the robot, I think is like the most fun. Okay. I definitely do, uh, I think almost all the components. I'm robot lead this year. So I have to do programming and check in with everybody, but largely I am build team and media. Oh, okay. No, that's awesome. Now, um, you used a term that I'm not used to, uh, uh, robot lead. What, what does oh, that mean? So we started a new thing this year because we have more students where we gave somebody, like a student, a position of, like, I don't want to say authority, uh, but somebody that if somebody has a question, like a responsibility, or somebody has a question, they can come to them and ask them or like Finn is manipulator lead, which is a component on a robot and we all kind of work together. Okay. The leads right, also so get final, the leads also get final says on what gets done to their section of the robot. Okay, okay, no, that's okay. So to me, and again, just, I just got introduced to robotics last year in Alexandria. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've absolutely loved it. Uh, number one thing I've been saying throughout the entire time has been, where was this when I was in high school? Because believe you me, I don't know what I would have done because everything that you guys are doing and everything that we talked about, completely over my head, it'd probably be, hey, go screw in this screw. I did something cool. Um, <clears throat> but... Um, it almost kind of sounds like a wee bit of like a captain role for like other sports events. Is it? Yeah. Kind of if you want to compare it to that, you know how like in sports teams, there's like varsity captain and then JV right. uh, robot leads kind of like varsity. And then I feel like Finn's position or just like the other leads would be JV. Okay. Now, Julia, you also mentioned that you do, uh, like media this what mm -hmm. what does that entail what what do you what do you think? 
Okay, so we have a website and an Instagram and working on other platforms, social media, because we have more students here. But we have an Instagram, it's Red River Rage uh, 7048, all lowercase. And I kind of just run through that and make sure we can have connections and we post our processes because we can apply for awards with that and potentially get seen more, you know, and sponsorship wise, it helps us a lot. Uh, that's awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. Now, um, <clears throat> with this year's uh, game, what do you think is going to be the most difficult part of this year's game? You can. Honestly, maybe I don't want to say game pieces because I think once we get that down, it'll be super easy. But maybe fitting together with all the other robots on the charge station yeah. and not like teeter tottering off of it, like keeping everyone balanced in the middle would definitely be really difficult. And I'm really interested to see how that works out at competition. Because last year we did a skinny bot, so that way we could fit um, three robots on the hangar. But this year we can't do that because of drivability wise, when you're putting cubes on, you're going to want more of a square frame. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you brought up last year in, in, with Alexander, last year being more of a, um, I always kind of said like, hey, it's it's almost like they're playing basketball and then they had to go and <laughs> climb and stuff like that. This year is very much like you guys were saying, you place the game pieces, you have a um, traffic cone and a cube. It, it look, yeah, but it looks like it's a- It's squishy. It's like a beach ball kind of. It looks like a beach ball. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> and then like uh, Finn, you were kind of saying the little teeter-totter thing where you have to balance everybody out on um what type of style of game do you like more do you like this more of a kind of place and pick up and place type of game or do you like the shooting one a little bit more i think pick up and place just because every team has some kind of drive train that they'll use that is reliable and at the end of the day when a game is focused on shooting components it's how well can we how long can we practice driving this robot? How good is our limelight? Because a lot of the teams that end up making it to Einstein and go to Worlds, it was their limelight. Lining up, grabbing their ball, finding a perfect spot to shoot. It was consistency versus this game. It's more skill-based and strategy, I think. Okay. Now, <clears throat> And it is one of those things, it's always so interesting to see when it comes to what we kind of talk a lot about, like the game, like, hey, this is a strategy, X, Y, Z. But your guys' season, it starts so much earlier. I, I think it started, what was it, the very beginning of this month or a little bit at the end of last month with uh, the announcing of the game and everything else. What is the first kind of step that you guys were like hey we got we know what the game is now what is step one for you guys that's a you question read the rules <laughs> you have to read the manual and you you can't even start building a drivetrain because the requirements usually change and fluctuate every year so you need to read all 141 pages trust me you left so there's 141 page yeah. rule book that changes every single year that you get well some will stay the same like be a good person but uh other than that yeah okay okay what is um you brought up the rule book and everything else what, what is what was probably the most like frustrating rule that you kind of saw where you're like oh i had this idea and now it's completely kaputs because this rule's in there Initially, um, when I wanted to do a trebuchet design, we found out that at a okay at the height we would need it to go at and extend, it would extend over the limits. I think the limit's what, 48 inches this year outside of your perimeter, like this way. And we would need it to be like 49 or something. And I know they did that on purpose, so we'd have to work around it and have an additional uh, stage in our trebuchet, but it's was really frustrating. Okay. Now you're, you're 
what what is what is a I'm gonna say trebuchet. What is that? Um, so it's kind of like a catapult, but has 180 degrees of movement versus like just about like 90 or so. Uh, so we can extend this way and that way and pick up from either side. So that way we don't have to spend as much time turning around and having an elevator that has to extend like in one direction only. Okay, okay, okay. Now, <clears throat> once you read the rules, everything else, then it's, I I'm gonna guess it's probably design and hey, what? Brainstorm. What Brainstorm. So what, what does the brainstorming typically look like for you guys? Um, um, well, there's, I guess it's just kind of whatever comes to mind, we just throw on a whiteboard. Yeah, we have like four different walls in our room and three of them have whiteboards. So we break off into groups of like four, maybe three, three yeah, or so. Uh, claim a whiteboard and argue for like <laughs> three practices. It and works yeah. well though. I mean, it's just kind of whatever silly idea because we don't want to exclude any ideas because then they get stuck in there and you don't get new ones refreshing. Mm -hmm. So it's just whatever comes to mind, whatever silly idea, throw it on the whiteboard and talk it out and talk it with your group. Because even if it's like un like if even if it's just not feasible, there's usually some part of the idea that's like, hey this makes sense maybe we can do it with this idea over here and then it just kind of snowballs and gets larger and larger until you just have like that's our section of the robot right there like that's the arm or like just off of these ideas okay. yeah we also do a lot of prototyping like uh this year we had i think it was a three practices in a row and mentors got a little bit heated over whether we wanted to do an elevator <laughs> or a trebuchet and at the end, we voted and we decided on trebuchet, obviously. But it's very, um, like, if you, it, once we narrow it down to two options, it's, if you can't prove it with math or physically show us, it's, it's out of the book. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so there's definitely a, a process to it mm -hmm. and everything else when it comes to, like you said, like silly idea. Now, now Finn, you, you brought up silly idea. What, in your opinion, what was... Well, it's probably one of the silliest ideas you, you kind of saw on there. Not not to throw any shade, but <laughs> like this I know, I know for me, I, I would be throwing up the silliest ideas ever. And it would all be like, man, I had this I toy once. It was like a pizza stomach. thrower thing. What? what was it? We had okay, we called it well, I think like four people maybe called it this. We had the stomach elevator because it's kind of like how an elevator is set up but they were convinced they could have a stage that would pass through the middle, but it wouldn't, it didn't really end up working because none of their math added up because uh, our frame perimeter is what, 28 and a half inches. And just with motors combined and with the metal pieces and the fact that you have to go two and a half inches into the frame, it didn't work at all. And I think that was the fact that it had to. Okay. No, it so, and, and just like you were, you were saying, like the math didn't add up, and and that can go into so many different like realms, <laughs> where I guarantee, like if you had more time, you could probably make that work, but you also have a crunch limit on it. Um, I think we have fifteen days till a week zero <laughs> event, and uh, we just started welding. Uh, no, our drive train, our drive train is welded. welded. Yeah, it's yeah, finished. It's, it's finished welding. Oh, but okay. nothing else. Okay. Right. All right. Hey, you got, you got the drive train. That's big. That's big. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right. Um. So, at the end of the day, um, once this year is done, what is what is a goal that you guys are kind of pushing towards or maybe it's a, a separate goal that you maybe have for yourself worlds we yeah, want we want to go to worlds so bad last year we were one point away <laughs> from going to finals because the team that selected us their bumper fell off and we lost by one point one point oh yeah, to the final. We had to like one in the finals, 
but it's the it's just sad that it was one point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess we're trying to win the Woody Flowers Award this year too with our mentors. Okay. Now, it, could you explain what the Woody Flower Award is? That's you. Oh, okay. That's not um, so Woody Flowers is so he was um kind of one of the founders of first robotics competition and he had the saying of like cooperation and just respect one another while you're playing and he passed away i think three or four years ago and ever since then they've done a tradition where you cannot every team nominates one alumni they have to have an essay um some kind of visual representation and then they also have to go to a conference room and present to judges why they think their mentor is like deserving to win the award uh, and it's just, there's usually up to 125 teams at an actual event versus off season where I was like maybe 17. So it's one to like 27 chance that you, uh, one to 127 chance that you will win. So it's really difficult, but we're really pushing for it this year. All right. No, that's awesome. Well, uh, Vin, Julia, thank you so much for, uh, spending time and talking with me. This was awesome. Um, <clears throat> Again, all the luck, all the, I, I don't know if it's cliche to say, you know, good luck or break a leg or what the, what the proper thing to tell you guys, but um, <clears throat> hey, go out there and kill it. Uh, it sounds like you guys are in the process of killing it right now. So uh, with that being said, uh, thank you again for joining. Uh, we'll be right back. And welcome back into the yourliveevent.com robotic show. That's going to go ahead and do it for us here today. Uh, we want to say special thanks to, to Rory Held, as well as the Red River Rage Robotics team and the Warrior Robotics team for taking the time to sit down with us this week. This has been the YourLiveEvent.com Robotics Show, powered by Enbridge. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you next Saturday, 10 a.m.